The real problem is they don't know what a modernized China will be about. It's not going to be Confucian. It's not going to be Marxist-Leninist. What is it going to be about? There's no there there. And this is something which the leadership have acknowledged in the sense that they have said we do not know quite how to relate to the people sometimes. Because in the days of Confucianism, in the days of Marx and Lenders, whether you liked it or not, there was a relationship. It was not merely a political doctrine, it was a social doctrine as well. And it bound government leaders and people together, whether they liked it or not. So you knew what China meant. They don't know what China means now. So, Rod, if the first act, in a certain sense, was the quest for wealth and power, and if perhaps we are actually coming up against some line of history, and I think there's many reasons to feel that at some point we, we either are or will, then what is the next act? It's difficult to say what, what the next act is when the leadership of China doesn't seem to know, so it's a little bold for us to, to walk in. But I think that the next act has to be a realization uh, that uh, leaders and led in China, like in any other country, have to have a basis of trust uh, and a basis of empowerment in the part of the people. Uh, I'm not suggesting that they have to go to democratic elections tomorrow, anything like that. But what I am saying is that they've got to find a way in which they can persuade the people of China that despite all the corruption and the government, the party is terribly corrupt, despite all the damage to the environment, which is enormous, Ian, I think, has written about this, um, that somehow the government is their government. At the moment, it's just the government. It's the leaders. It's them in <coughs> Beijing, far away. It's not their government. They have no possession of that government like they have no possession of any ideas which link them to that government. And um, the next step has to be for them to find a way to get that relationship, if they can. And they talk about it enough. I yes. mean, they, they're talking, they talk constantly about political reform, and this always gets journalists very excited. You know, Wen Jiabao will bring up political reform once a year or once every couple of years, and people will go, this means they're going to reevaluate uh, <laughs> Tiananmen Square and, and the whole thing. But I think they don't really know what they mean by it. Um, and, they know they, what they don't mean by it. They know what they don't mean by it. Well, they have a vague idea that it'll be a little more, somehow a little more responsive. There'll be some me means for the citizenry to have some input, some feedback. But, uh, but there isn't, I don't think, anything more than that. Um, you've given us a great sense of the um, social forces and social tensions that are swirling around China. But I wonder if you can, it almost sounds as if the party is a kind of unified force. And I wonder if you can talk about the party and what's going on behind the scenes there. Presumably there are going to be a lot of negotiations in Beidaihe this summer before the um, you know, change of leadership in the fall. And I wonder how split the party is, what are the factions, and, and um, you know, is there kind of a reform, so-called reform faction versus a more conservative faction. Can you talk about the party situation? Thanks. There are factions in the party, but I don't think it's as clear as in the past where you could say there's a reformist wing and there's a, a conservative wing and so on and so forth. I think there are a lot of different interest groups. It's become very complex, some people supporting large state-owned enterprises and so on and so forth. Um, and I, that, that also creates this logjam. Uh, that it's harder to negotiate all of these interest groups that are clogging up the system. Sounds kind of like the United States. I was thinking the same <laughs> <Yeah>. thought. <laughs> uh, so um, I, I'm not, I, I don't think you'll see that kind of a division or the, the top is certainly not ribbon. I don't think of the nine or seven people, however many are in the standing committee, three are on one side, four on the other or, any, or anything like that. Uh, there are people in the party who are very pro-reform and very outspoken and, you know, there are 80 million party members, so you do have people who are in favor of democracy in the party. Um, but by and large, those people don't have a voice and it's in a way, it's kind of like the mafia. I mean, to get to the top of it, you're not going to be um, advocating uh, democracy and, and that sort of thing. 
So I don't see the current leadership making any fundamental changes. Uh, there, are, there is a case to be made that Xi Jinping might have a bit more clout because he's a princeling, the son of a revolutionary veteran, he might have a bit more of a power base, he's got good ties to the military. Uh, people had made similar arguments a decade ago about uh, Hu Jintao, so I'm, I would be very cautious. I think there's always a lot of optimism at this time. There's new leaders are coming in. Let's hope they're better than the old ones. And here's my case why it should be. Uh, I don't mean to be pessimistic. I just don't think people really know very much. He's never made any programmatic statement. He's never come out in favor of anything. And that's why he got where he is, right? Because he's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's a cipher. And Ian, it's interesting. Even after 10 years in office, Hu Jintao has never really revealed himself. Yeah, what, is, I mean, what does he stand for? Yeah. It's an interesting he stands for himself remaining in power. And the party stability. Remains. I mean, that's right. been his yeah. keyword: stability, harmony, right. those kind of things. Yeah. Well, listen, gents. Thank you for coming. It's been very nice to have you. We're now going to be attacked by the gentleman you didn't recognize. You will protect us. Sick, sick you will protect us.